Hey friends, here we are on lesson 8.7, benchmark fractions. All right, use models to compare. This is a quick check. Let's review what we did last week. So remember, we kind of did that cross multiplication model where we said five times one was five, Whoa. and two times three was six, and we said six is larger than five, so two fifths is greater than one third. Yeah. Okay. Number two, four, three fourths times one fourth. Stop and think. No robots, no robot math. Which one of these is greater? I don't have to cross multiply. Since they have the same denominator, I know that three fourths is going to be larger than one fourth. Great. Okay. Let's check this one. Six times two is 12. Three times two, uh oh, is 12. That means they're equal. Great. All right, okay, three tenths and one half. I can think this one through. If this were half, the numerator would be five, right? So this one is less, you got it. But if I cross multiplied, 10 times one is 10, two times three is six, and I got it right. Okay, how about this one? Nine or four ninths and one third. Mm, let's do the cross multiplication. Nine times one is nine, Three times four is 12, so this one is larger. Last one, three-fourths and seven-eighths. I always get tricked, trick, tricked when the numerator and the denominator are one away from each other. So let's see, four times seven is 28. Three times eight is 24. So 28 is larger than 24. Great, great, great. All right, let's look at... Benchmark fractions. Think of a ruler. What is in the middle of zero and one? If this were a ruler, what is in the middle? What's this part? Yeah, we call that one. We call that half, right? That would be half. Think of four sixths. If the denominator is six, the denominator is six. If your number line was out of six, what would be in the middle? Or what is half of six? Yes, Th oops, three is half of six. Three is half of six. So if this would be in the middle and this was three, where would four six fall in this number line? It is greater than one half. Four six would be over here, right? If we divided this into six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's important that you try to make these sections here as equal in distance as you can. So if the middle is three, our four would be here. And so four sixth, four out of six, would be closer to one whole than closer to zero. Yes? Does that make sense? All right, how about this one? Think of three tenths. The denominator is 10. Remember the denominator tells us how many parts there are. So if the denominator is 10, we should make this number line out of 10. So the middle would be, what would the middle be? What's half of 10? Five, the middle would be five. So would three tenths be on this side of the number line or on this side of the number line? Yes, it would be on this side, great. Great, great. So let's watch this video to explain to you how we're gonna use benchmark fractions today to compare fractions. And I know that maybe you like the way I showed you last week, but this is a new strategy. And remember, sushi rule, you need to give it a try for today. And then if you don't like it, you can go back to one of the other strategies. Here we go. going to compare the fractions 4 6 and 5 12. I can go ahead and write those here. So we're comparing 4 6 and 5 12. So let's think about putting these fractions first on a number line. Here on my number line I'm going to mark 0 and over here I'm going to mark 1. Let's start with 4 6. Is 4 6 close to 0? No. Let me think about 4 6 compared to 1 half. 4 6 is a little bit greater than 1 half, so I'll place 4 6 on my number line just about right here. Now let's think about 5 twelfths. Is 5 twelfths close to zero? <coughs> Not really. 
let me think about one half. Is five twelfths close to one half? Yeah, it's just a little bit less than one half. So I will place five twelfths on my number line just about right here. So here I can see that four sixths is greater than five twelfths. Now I can also check that problem using my fraction tiles. So I'll get out my whole, and this also represents my number line with zero on this side and one over here. Now remember I was comparing four sixths to five twelfths. So here are four one sixth pieces, and I determined that those were greater than five twelfths. So I can put five twelfths right here on top to compare whether four sixths is greater than five twelfths. And indeed, four sixths is greater than five twelfths. <laughs>Okay, so we're going to use benchmark fractions to compare just as she did in the video. So when we think about one-fourth, let's place one-fourth on this number line. If we're talking about fourths, what would be the number in the middle here? What's half of four? Yeah, it would be two. So one-fourth would be about right here, right? So if we were to divide this fraction into fourths, one, two, three, four would be our fourths. So I'm just going to put this in purple, okay? So one-fourth is right here. Now I'm going to change colors for one-sixth. One-sixth, that means we're dividing this fraction, this number line into six sections. So in the middle would be, well, what's half of six? Three. So I need one, two, three, four, five. So remember our one-sixth is red. So one-sixth would be right here. So now with this number line, we can visually see that one-sixth is actually less than one-fourth, or we would read this as one-fourth is greater than one-sixth. Okay, let's try another one. How about this one? Use benchmark fractions to compare. I just think this way is super cool. It is different than what we did last week, but I think it's cool. So let's use this, this um, number line here to compare. So let's look at two-sixths. Remember that if six is our denominator and we divide this number line into six, what's in the middle? Three sixths. So two sixths would fall about right here, right? Two sixths. Okay, and maybe we have one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths, and this one would be six sixths. Six sixths. That word is hard for me to say. Okay, let's do this one, three eighths. What is half of eight? That would be four, you're right. So we need to, this would be four eighths. So three eighths is going to be on this side and since two sixths is on this side too, I wanna make sure I mark this so that I can really see which one is greater. Okay, so this would be divided in, this would be four. So three, two, one. That looks about right, that's pretty good. Pretty good, Mrs. Mucci. Five, six, seven, and eight eighths. So if this one is, this one is three eighths, which one is greater? Yeah, this one is greater. So this would read two sixths is less than three eighths. Okay, are you getting the hang of this? Let's try another one. Use a benchmark fraction to compare. And this is what you'll have to do in your workbook today. So what you need to do is, first of all, you need to draw your line. Look, at that's not even a straight line. This is zero. This is one. And we have to have something in the middle. Okay, one-third and two-fifth. So one-third, I'm going to make that blue. If you wanted to use colored pencils on today's math lesson, you could. Okay, so one-third. Whoa, this one's tricky. What's half of three? Half of three is one and a half. So I'm going to put the one here and the two here and the three thirds would be here. So one third would be about right here. And how about fifths? So fifths we'll do in red. So fifths, again, what's half of five? Two and a half, not a whole number. Okay, so we need to make one, two, three, four, Five fifths. Those look pretty equal, right? The red sections look pretty equal. So two fifths would be here. Now we can visually, we can visualize which one is greater on the number line, right? Two fifths is greater. So we would read this as one third is less than two fifths. 
Let's try another one. Use benchmark fraction to compare. So let's go ahead and draw our benchmark. Let's do it with this color. Okay, we have zero, we have one, we have the middle. All right, so this first one is four sixths. We'll make that blue. Four sixths. What's half of six? Three, right? So four sixths would go about right here. This would be five sixths and six sixths, right? So four sixths. All right, now let's do five eighths. So what's half of eight? Half of eight is four. Oh, so it's going to be on the same side too because five eighths is greater than half, but there are more parts than we have here. So this one will have to be five eighths, six eighths, oh, seven eighths, eight eighths. So five eighths is actually smaller. Right. Well done. No, is that right? No, I said that wrong. I said that wrong. Four six and five eighths. Um, five eighths. I wrote that wrong. I wrote. I wrote that wrong. I wrote that backwards. Give me a second. Mutual mistake. Hmm. Mistakes are good though. Remember growth mindset. There we go. Four six is greater than five eighths. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Let's try another one. Draw our benchmark. Zero and one. And a line in the middle, right? So the middle of thirds, oh, again, we have thirds. Thirds doesn't have a middle. So we'll put one, two, and three. Okay, eight tenths. Now what's half, uh, let's, oop, one third would be here. What's half of 10? Yes, half of 10 is five. So this would be five tenths. I don't even have to put this on the number line to tell you that this eight tenths is greater, although... If I had looked at these numbers and didn't do robot math, robot math, I would have been able to tell you that right away. Yeah, I know. I know. I should have. I should have. You're right. All right. Oh, order from least to greatest. Let's do this one, and then we'll, 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 we will be done. So order from least to greatest. Again, we're going to use that number line strategy. Here's our middle. Um, let's see. Three eighths. So eight, three eighths, four eighths would be our middle. So three eighths will be about right here, right? One eighth, two eighth, three eighths, four eighths. Okay, so I'm gonna write three eighths. Let's pick another color, oh, green. Two sixths. Well, half of six is three, so two sixths. One sixth. So two sixths would be right here. Oh, so two sixths is the smaller one. And four tenths. Let me get a different color for four tenths. Let's do orange. Four tenths. Well, half of ten is five tenths. So let's see, one tenth, two tenth, three tenths would be around here somewhere, right here, I don't know. And then four tenths would be here. So four tenths is actually the largest. So it would, remember, least to greatest, smallest one is this one, second place is this one, third place is this one. Okay, friends. That's all we have for math today for the math video. Now you can head on over to Schoology, check out your assignment. Remember that if you don't understand this and you need more help, what should you do? Yes, join the live meeting. All right, friends, remember, no wave in the white flag, sushi rule. We're going to give this a try, even if we don't like it. But there are some of you that probably will like it. So best of luck. I'll see you soon. Bye.